stay, stay, stay woke. Be curious, be curious, be curious. Oh, cu- curious, be curious, it's a curious, curious. Be a bit more like doubting Thomas. Not that you doubt anything, but at least have the patience to investigate it. Have the patience to investigate it. You know, have the patience to investigate whatever it is. Think about it. Use your mind. Give yourself the 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 time to to analyze this thing. Activate your thinking mind that God has given you. Use it. Your faith is as strong as your fear is. And you know how powerful your fear is. You know how fear controls you. You know how fear makes you life. The ups and downs. When you're scared of doing something. That's how strong your faith should be. But when you believe without questioning. Then how strong is really. Is your faith is. How strong really is your faith. When you believe everything without questioning it. It's like when you drink anything without saying, what's this? Is this water? Is this poison? (laughs) First, accept. Then learn more about that thing before you believe. You cannot just hear and believe. It doesn't just go like that. You hear immediately, you sold in it. There has to be a space for thinking, for building something around it. It has to be something valuable. You just take your body for for instance. You don't just put everything you see into your body, every kind of food into your body. Sometimes you try, you try, you try different cuisines, different recipes. You like this or you dislike that. It doesn't mean that that food you don't like, it's bad or anything. Someone else, that might be like someone else's favorite food. But to you, that's not for you. And that's what faith should be. You should investigate, learn about this thing, then think this is for me or this is not for me. It's that simple. Yeah, I can ride with this. No, 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 no. I let this go. This is not for me. Don't become gullible. There's this, this difference between being believing and being gullible. And many of these practices, I tell you, many of these things are practiced, especially by the poor, by the poor. And then you think, why am I poor? You are poor because you've refused to grow. There's a lot of things you can do. Working hard these days, working hard these days does not get you. Can you imagine a a doctor now spent like, is it 10 years or 7 years in university to earn maybe 200,000 or max 300,000? 500,000 per annum. Why someone would just like have um, an instant, um, instant, uh, what do you call it? Something trending, I've forgotten the word for it. An instant overnight success on social media and they're making 5 million, 6 million a year. Just from one viral post, one viral post. You might think it's luck, but they could have been working on that thing for years in the dark, on the blind side. And just one click, they're making five million a year. Why a doctor spends like 10 years in the university, like learning in teaching hospitals, and is now making 300 or 400 or 500, even if up to that, a year. And why one person viral video is now making them more than a million a year. So it's no more back to working hard these days is about working smart and you cannot work smart without the brain without a thinking brain without functioning brain without the what effect be curious always ask what always ask what be curious always ask yourself that question what why be curious this day very very curious curiosity curiosity about things, don't just believe, don't be gullible, don't just accept whatever, you know, comes to you. The poor people, you know, I grew up being poor, questions very, very little things. Had a lack of disrespect, or they don't want to lose the next meal, they've grown up, and over time, that has become them. 
they say sorry so it's like um i, I remember like nearly most time i would say sorry even before you say anything and people's like why are you saying sorry i've grown up saying sorry before before say sorry before you answer before i ask you a question i would say sorry and after i ask the question i would say sorry before i replied i would say it's just people now ask why are you saying sorry it's not your fault and i've grown up saying sorry for every sentence i have i have more than 10 sorries in it before i start before i finish i have sorry why i have grown up in that environment um if i didn't leave the environment i was never gonna outgrow the environment just like the shark if you leave the shark in a shark tank it's never gonna outgrow a shark tank it's only gonna grow to up to eight inches when you put that same shark in the wild it grows up to eight feet or more why because you can never outgrow your environment and if you're in an environment where you never question anything you would never become anything it's that simple you will never become anything don't be gullible don't let superstitions ruin your life question these things question these things no no single person in this world has the answer to everything. No single person has the answer to everything. Uh, I think it was in our Second Corinthians when when um, the poor the apostle says, "I don't understand. I don't understand. You fall for everything quickly. If if you believe and 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 if you like I, like I said to you, I'm new to the Bible myself, and I don't believe everything." I read and try and interpret it to my understanding and thank God for that. I am growing. St. Paul says, fake apostles will come to you. Antichrist will come to you like God. And you believe. And if Jesus said there's going to be Antichrist coming soon, then why do you believe every single thing? Why don't you invest your time to question this thing? If you actually believe in Christ and he says there's going to be some Antichrist coming in the place of pastors, then why do you still believe every single thing without a question? Why don't you investigate? Why don't you invest in yourself? For the same Paul says, I am not, I'm an untrained speaker, not as refined as your prominent or eminent apostles. But when it comes to knowledge, I have the same knowledge as these people. And I will give you the truth. So that's what I'm telling you. I'm giving you the truth because the truth affects me myself up to today. And I'm doing this for myself too and for my generation and for people like you to grow. And, and, and maybe... Like when you traveled around the world, like I have, I'm not, this is not boasting. This is just telling you the difference because I can sit here and tell you the difference because I've been fortunate enough to travel around the world and I have seen that there is a disease that affects poor people. And I would say as a black person, I would say mostly as a black person, especially like in black Christianity. Black Christianity, the style of black Christianity is you accept anything. As far as coming from an older person, there are some kind of apostles, you never question. You should never question. You should just accept. You should just accept it. Take it. They know better than you. Why? Who are you to question? You should, when you walk into like um, a religious house, you should just shut your mind off. And get ready to listen. Don't question. Don't think. You're not here to think. You're here to observe, to take. And that's where most of us go wrong. Lack of questioning. We don't build on our faith. We just accept and take it. Like going back to this story of Frederick Douglass. 400 years, the slaves were prevented from reading. Why? The slave masters could see how strong they are, how big they are, but they knew they've captured their mind. The chains, the chains have been taken off our ankles. Of course, 
the chains have been taken off her ankles. And I can tell you currently, do you know where the chains are placed? I'll tell you where the chains are placed. You just look at most rappers. Look at most rappers in any continent. Look at rappers. Rappers. Rap is a music from the ghetto. Look at rappers. And that will tell you where the chains are placed now. The massive ball and chain has been taken off her ankles like 400 years or how many years ago. But it's placed right on her chest. And that's where you would see rappers with their big chain right on their chest. And they're telling you, yeah, the chain is off my ankle. Now I'm wearing it right on my chest. And I'm showing you. And then they think that's a display of wealth of power. No, that's not a display of wealth. That's not a display of power. That's a display of saying, I now carry the chain on my chest because it's taken off my ankle. And I can walk around and tell you, like, yeah, look at me. I still got this chain on my chest. Tell me how many times do you see Bill Gates walking around with a massive chain on his neck? Or do you see uh, even Mark Zuckerberg or Barack Obama? But whenever you carry that chain in your chest, you're basically saying, yes, I've gotten rid of this ball and chain on my ankle. Now I can walk around with it proudly on my chest. Just like um, the world nigger was... was um, Reutilized. Utilized now. I mean, before it used to be called the slave master calling uh, a black person a nigger. Now the, the black person has reutilized the word to call himself nigger. So, yeah, I've redefined this word and I'm going to carry it about. I don't see any other generation doing that, any other ethnic group doing that. When people call people something from, from hatred, they, 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 they distance themselves from that because they learn and grow and say, no, that's not me. That is not me. Take an example of caged animals in the circus. Lion, tigers. You know how strong a tiger is? One tiger is said to have the strength of 10 men. One elephant, see how big an elephant is. One elephant probably has the strength of 20 men. But you have elephant in the circus being led around with a single, single little chain on the neck. Like when they pull they could break down the chain. Do you know why that animal has been caged from a kid, from a baby? They've been chained and they've been trained, they've been trapped. And when they fought and fought as a kid, they couldn't escape. They became one with cagedness. Now they've accepted their fate. And when they grew, they, they, they've forgotten how powerful they are and they just become pets. And that was happened to your mind when you stop believing, when you stop questioning things. You've accepted your fate. You've accepted your cage. You have accepted your fish tank. You can only grow to size. You know why? You can never outgrow your environment. It's impossible to grow, outgrow your environment unless you leave the environment and put yourself, place yourself in a free wide world and that's when you can grow to size don't be gullible in life have a bit of respect for what god has given you be a bit of doubt in thomas be slow to believe be slow to believe investigation believing without verification even god will not be angry at you for for questioning for wanting to know more you know why he gave you a curious mind a curious mind to question things to use your mind to grow that's why man has been able to put the rocket in space like build house um build a tunnel under the water do you know the english channel now you can travel under the water from from england to to france do you know how that came about one man believed that we can do this one man believed that we can do this just from the power of the mind there was nothing like that before and he thought we can do this just from the power of the mind he was able to do that do you know why um, the colonial masters, the slave masters, prevented the slaves from reading? Because they understood the power of the mind. Early on, 
regardless of how, regardless of how powerful you look regardless of how strong you look if your mind is captured you are captured if your mind is controlled you are controlled and this is a seller of my brothers and sisters the mind that captures the mind are captured. They are controlled by the environment and they don't know this. They blame every other thing around them except themselves. Ask someone why they poor. They give you so many reasons, so many lists. But if you go through that list, the only thing that is not on that list is that person. They're missing from that list. Then they 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 um they they, they miss themselves out. Why they don't count? Every other circumstance uh, is is uh, against them but why accept them the, the only person in that that's not on the list every other thing is on the list is the government is the weather every other thing you have to change nothing is going to change around you if you don't change it's that simple to live well to live honorable to to uh from the water for the island to walk it right walk it right to live and enjoy life once they said life is only once you only live once but to walk it right you have to you have to live to fulfill your god's calling that's the way you're walking right that's where you're walking right if 400 years your forefathers were prevented from reading from reading because the, the slave masters knew the power of reading. Just like women were prevented from voting because they knew the power of vote. And the power of the mind. And now you have so much books you can read. It's free to go to some library. You can get so much book online. You can get some more book from charity. I mean, I used to go to charity shop and buy books like uh, a pound. I remember um, in, in, in Lagos, if I'm traveling into state, I go to the motor park, I buy three books. Before I get to where I'm going, I've read this three book. On my way back, I buy purchase another three book. I used to read six books or more just traveling into state. When I used to travel in the... When I used to travel... Uh, with the um, interstate bus. I tried to educate myself. Still, it wasn't enough. Still, it wasn't enough. It recently I knew this. I can read everything. I have to pick specific book that's going to help me, that's going to make me grow, that's going to lead me to where I, I'm going to, and therefore I can bring this out and help people like me. And when I say people like me, I don't mean color, race. I just mean people who started off like me, poor. I want to become more people who think they would have to be um, people who have stopped learning because they right now there's no one pushing them to learn. I mean, the parent pushed them to go through university, sorry, through high school, primary school, or maybe university, and after that, they stopped learning because now there's no one to force that upon them, and then they don't, they haven't got the power to force them themselves, so they give in and become one way failure. And so when they make a list of all oh, why they have failed, they refuse to put themselves. Why? Because they don't see themselves valuable. Every other thing makes their life go around but them. You have to wake up every morning and say to yourself, I am here. I am here and I'm taking charge. That's what I say to myself. Now, you know what? I, I never used to believe in affirmation. And, and then just don't, don't just wake up every day saying affirmation affirmation you have to put some work to it like i don't you know there's like a lot of executive and whoever wakes up at four o'clock or five o'clock you can't be that you can't wake up at four o'clock five o'clock if you don't have anything to do they've got programs they've got plans they plan their whole day out so they could walk up wake up at four o'clock or five o'clock and walk to six or seven they have plans you can't wake up at six or seven just sitting there doing nothing when you don't have plans in your life it's you you rather just go to bed you need to sleep more than just waking up and that's what thinking is about that's what reading is about empower your mind empower your mind read for the dog for the dog that's got whipped every day as a 16 year old kid for just reading and he wouldn't give up he kept on reading. He wouldn't give up. He kept on reading. Why? Because he realized he could not he could not function as a slave anymore. He was a free mind. The minute his mind became free, that was the minute he became free. 
Not when he, he escaped from Covey Farm. No. The minute he realized how to learn, when Sophia taught, taught him how to read the alphabet and then he took it upon himself to teach himself, that was the minute he became free. That was the minute he became a free man. That was the minute he stopped becoming a slave. And then going back, as I said to you, I'm not a trained speaker. No, but I have acquired this knowledge and I want to share with you to become better, to better your soul, to invest in yourself, to tap your head, self in the head and say, I'm going to question everything. I'm going to improve on myself. I'm going to work on myself. I don't want to be in this shoe. I want to create generational wealth. I don't want my kids to suffer just the way I have suffered. Why? Because I haven't invested in myself. And if you start investing in yourself today, you might not become the top one or two in the world but you can pass this on to your kid and they have a better foundation they have a better foundation if your parent is not giving this advantage you can give this advantage to your kid and you don't need much money or billion no you just give them a book constant train your mind train your mind after school train your mind it was said that before your kid goes to school i think they spend around 40 to 42 000 hours with you or something before they go to the school so you have the, the power the, the 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 time to invest it, you know, to to um define to refine your kids to influence your kids before they go into the outer world to school where they will get you know 110 hours in school before they get influenced by the school and when they come back you have to reiterate constantly trying to influence their mind and that's the way you build generation wealth generational wealth because now your kids are they are curious they are awake they stay in work How many times have you seen? How many times have you seen a body, a bodyguard smaller than maybe the VIP or whoever they're guarding? They're always bigger. They're always bigger than the bodyguard is always bigger than um, the client. Why? Because the client is the brain and the muscle has to protect the brain. The brain and the brawn, the brawn and the brains, the muscle has to protect the brain. If a tiger is stronger than 10 men and one man can capture a tiger and cage a tiger, can trap a tiger and cage a tiger, what does that tell you about brain and brawn? You know? What does that tell you about brain and brain? If one tiger is the strongest 10 men and just one man who capture, trap a tiger, capture it and cage it, what does that tell you about brain and brain? If a chimpanzee, a chimpanzee is the strongest three men and one man can capture 10, 20 chimpanzees and cage them and sell them on, which I'm against the selling of animal from Africa. I'm totally against it. It's a horrible thing. But just going back to how the brain works, if chimpanzee are very smart, very close to human, and three times as strong or four times as strong as a human, and a human can trap a chimpanzee and cage it, that tells you the power of the mind. I mean, some people put their power to bad, um, bad use. That's why you see some hackers, you know, very smart people. They put their mind to 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 bad. Some from fraudster, very brilliant people. If they invested their their mind in something special, they will be one of these um, inventors, maybe invention of Uber or something, but they focus in the mind on exploiting other people, being frosted. So don't get me wrong, people could put the action to, to bad use, but imagine the power of the mind. Imagine if there's more of those people who invest their memory, their power, their belief to do good rather than to do bad. So, but whenever you cross your arm, you refuse to participate in the world of doing good. Then those on the other side doing bad are always going to win. Because there's more of them doing bad than you doing good. There's more of them questioning than you not questioning. So, believing without question is gullible. Spend time thinking about this. Even God says... There will be Antichrist. So why believe in everything without questioning? Especially when you know there could be Antichrist out there taking 
you know, pretending to be from God. And then you just believe and consume everything. What does that make you? What does that make you? Why don't you question anything? It's basically like um, when I'm sure maybe you've been um, contacted by these frost, online fraudsters and they, 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 they rush you information. They tell you, oh, you don't, don't do this or don't tell this person. Just take it. They practice saying to you, don't investigate this. Don't question this. Whatever happens, just accept it. Get back to me quickly. Like I'm sure you've had this dozen of scam emails. So, and some people fall prey to that because they keep it quiet. They think it's you know some kind of investment success, and they don't question anything. And then they fall prey to the scammers. So imagine, and someone or some kind of apostle or preacher of any religion is giving you some information, and they're forcing you not to question. Just take that out of religious setting and just place that on the wider world. Someone is giving you information and they're saying to you, I know this, you don't have to question it because I'm telling you, just do it. What does that make you? What does that make you? You should, you should question. You should investigate. You should think. Be a thinking man. Be a thinking man. Don't be scammed. Don't worry when, when you've been chastised for, for, for questioning a pastor or something. No, or uh, an, 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 uh, an elder, an adult. A kid, be a kid, be a big kid. A kid will question you and question you and question you, regardless. Because they want to know, they're curious. Their mind is wide. They want to absorb information. They want to know how things work. You should do it. You shouldn't stop doing that because you're becoming an adult. You should ask. How does this thing function? I don't know. Please teach me. I am willing to learn. We should, more, we should be more curious than ever. We should be more curious than ever. The slaves were prevented from reading for 400 years. And now there's so much books everywhere and it's so cheap. And then you've prevented yourself from reading. We should be more curious than any other race. Why? Because we have so much to catch up on. So much to catch up on. So much reading. So much knowledge to know. We have so much to catch up on. We should be more curious than ever. We should read and read and read until we become the book itself every day, every time we should give time to read it. We should never be bind by what binds others until we totally understand that. And it's not because books are expensive. No, I buy a book for um, a pound, a dollar, less than that. There's so many books you can read. Pick the one that's good for you. The one that's going to lead you. The one is going to direct you to work, whichever field you want to go. This goes back to skill. Reading is a kind of a skill. It teaches you how to speak. It teaches you how to communicate. It teaches you how to be friendly. And it teaches you how to cut out from those in your environment and how to influence another environment and how to prevent your environment from influencing you. And sometimes you can outgrow your environment by being in your environment. Why? Because you stepped outside and you see what's happening in the other environment. And now you bring it back and then influence your environment. Why? Because you decided to investigate. You decided to read. You decided to open your mind up and say, yes, I am. I am here. I am here. Yeah, I am here. Frederick Douglass, an enslaved, um, an enslaved worker in Maryland in 1838. He was whipped every day for learning before he finally escaped from the uh, Covey farm. From this harsh master, he was transferred from 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 um, uh, farm to farm because they were just trying to break his spirit. But he 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 resisted. 
Frederick Douglass and enslaved worker in Maryland escaped to become a prominent activist, a public speaker, leader in the uh, abolition movement to end the practice of slavery. Because he was a slave himself, he saw how dehumanizing that was. And this Frederick Douglass credits everything back to Hughes, uh, Sophia's wife, uh, sorry, Hughes' wife, Sophia, who first taught him how to read the alphabet, just like your parent put you in school, primary school, secondary school, university, and then after that, you stop educating yourself. You're comfortable now. You could pay your bill, eat and sleep. But he took it upon himself to teach himself more after the education stopped. He took it upon himself to say, I would learn more. I'm, more, I'm curious now. I will learn more. And from learning more, he started teaching others. And that's when the slave master said, no, 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 no. We've seen how sharp you're becoming. We cannot let you know, some riot stuff over here. These, these slaves learning, knowing what we know, that they're the same as us. They're probably better than us. No, 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 no. We better cage the mind. You cannot give what you don't have. That's it. You can't give what you don't have. So he could only teach because he now has knowledge. You know, he could give what he has. He could share with people. As of today, just like anything, I tell you, your future, your future could be predicted. Yes, you, not by George or by, no, your future can be predicted. Why? And this is like, oh, my African brothers will say, oh, oh I, I forbid this, I forbid that. No, this is not forbidding anything. This is your future could be predicted based on your past and based on your current situation very current circumstance and when i'm talking about the past i'm not talking about oh you came from poverty no there's so many people who came from poverty and they've broken the chain of poverty they've gone on to do great things in their lives they've gone on to do great things in their life there's so many examples of people who came from poverty either through skills or um sport or something they've become they've become exceptional in their field because they've acquired knowledge. They have talent and they invested in it. They have talent and they gave it all. They worked twice as hard on their talent until it became exceptional. Yeah, your future can be predicted based on your past. Yeah. People can now tell you how your future is going to turn out based on your current activity. And you ask, what? How would you know? I tell you, many Africans, when you tell them, oh, you're going to remain poor for the rest of your life, they say, God forbid. And you ask them, okay, God forbid, tell me what you're doing today. Tell me the what you've read. Tell me how you invested in yourself. They're like, oh, no. I'm still working this one same job for for ten years on on uh, on twenty thousand thirty thousand. But but they pray and believe they're gonna they, they're gonna hammer. That's what I say. They're gonna blow. It's just gonna happen like that. But your current activities does not point in that direction. It's like compass. It's like compass. Where is your compass pointing to? Put your compass. Where is it pointing to us? What are you doing? What's your daily activity? That's what separates the good from the great, the daily activity, the time invested, the time you put in. That's what separates you from the ordinary. And so therefore, just like people could predict the financial you know, uh, outcome of a company based on its history and its current activity, your future could be predicted based on your current activity or your inactivity. And this is not God forbid. God has given us the grace. Everyone, God's given us grace, but your future and the future of your kid, generational wealth could be directed back to this spot. The spot you decided from today on 
I'm going to make a difference in my life. I was reading a book. I'm not 100% sure about it, but I'm sure I could get the quote for you. Like I for, forgot to take a note that day. I think it was from Jim Rohn. Or if it wasn't from Jim Rohn, it was from uh, John C. Maxwell. There's a lady who's like now a CEO of a top, uh, uh, a top 100 Fortune, 5, or Fortune 500 company in America. And she, the day she made the decision she's going to become something in her life was the day she asked for her husband for ten dollars and her husband says what do you want it for what do you want that for and that day she made the decision that from today on i'm never gonna ask anymore everything i want i'm going to get regardless for 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 years all she she did was she sat in the house woke up made food for the husband to go to a walk, made for the, for the kids to go to school. She picked up the kids and she slept. But from that day, she said to herself, I am never going to ask again. I am never going to ask again. As I'm telling you, I don't know the story myself. I read it from Jim Rohn's book or John C. Maxwell's book. I think it was from John C. Maxwell, Today Matters, I think. You know, those are one of my favorite books, Today Matters. Today, exactly, Today Matters. On that day, she said, today, from today, I am never going to ask anyone for anything anymore. I am going to get, I'm going to take. And from that day, she invested in herself. She took classes, she read books, she read Financial Times. She did whatever it took until she became a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Just because she made a decision on that day like from today from today i'm never gonna ask so if you're making a decision yourself then from today i'm gonna question everything i'm gonna invest in myself because not only am i investing in myself i'm investing in my kids future my kids kids my generation future from today if i sleep i sleep on the future if i don't invest i don't invest in the future in fact if i do nothing i'm taking from their future your inaction, your inaction is detracting from the future of your generation. So today, if you're going to break that, uh, that, 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 that family cost, many Africans believe in family cost. You know, there's like family history, the family being cost and everything. If you're going to break that today, just like John Maxwell says, today matters. If you're going to break that, instead of sitting there and saying, God forbid, and you're taking no action, your God forbid should be action, activity. Action, activity, investigate, improve yourself, work on yourself. That is what's going to break the generational cost. Not God forbid. God would not forbid anything to a lazy person. And a lazy person doesn't mean because you're working twice as hard. A lazy person means you might be working twice as hard in the wrong direction. You're never going to get to your goal. Imagine sprinting to the wrong direction. You're only just going to go as fast. You can't turn back and start walking. In fact, you just lost time. So saying God forbid is not the answer. The answer is what am I doing that God is going to support me? Just like in my life, I am. I get into some positions. I'm like, how am I in this position? But one thing, I have always taken action. I have only pushed myself. And then the invisible um, facts God puts me there. God gives me the grace. Why? Because I've done maybe 80% or 90% myself. And he knows, like, I'll give you some assistance because I know you'll be motivated and you do more for the next one. And next one, I'll give you some assistance. I remember if you read my story, I told you when I was offered a position, there was 300 people, 300 people on an application list. 300. Most people, when they see 10 people on an application list, they back down. I said, no, 300. I like this company. I'm going to put my name there. I'm going to make myself 301. Yeah, 301. I, I, I put my name there. I became 300 number, 301 applicant. And you know why I knew that? Because I, I, I was job searching at that point. This was back in 2000. 17 or 2018 2018 i think it was february february 2018 or march 2018 yeah it was 300 people on a job application for a very very marvelous company and i said well i'm not gonna give up i've got the skill i've done the hard work i've been to uni i've pushed myself after this i'm gonna put my name what makes them better than me 
I would have never done that if I didn't read a book to say to myself, these people are as good as me. And I play tennis, I meet a lot of um, wealthy people and I, and I observe them, I learn from them. I ask questions and I said, what makes you, what gets you to this place? And from their story, I was able to learn from their experience. So you cannot just learn from your experience, you need to learn from other people's experience. And where do you get that? You ask questions, you read books. I put my name to that, 301 on the list. That was me. And finally, after multiple, multiple interviews, multiple interviews, multiple layers of interviews, because I was telling you that is how um, good this company was. They called me. Finally, I got a job. They said, we're giving you 28,000. I said, thank you for the offer. But I was looking for 30 grand. I like in, in, in Lagos, um, um, this line goes like, oh, Akpa Jabo. You know, the, the, the recruiters like, what? We only advertise this thing for 28,000. I said, I know. I saw the, the rate, but I was looking for, you know, 30 grand because I, I assume when you look at my uh, resume, you would, you know, you don't want 30 grand. That's Akpa Jabo. I showed the fail. Mouth wide open. She's like, okay, uh, Mr. Bishop, we'll get back to you. And I said, God, thank you. God, thank you. And they called me back and said, Mr. Bishop, the job is yours. Do you want it? I'm like, yes, I want it. Thank you. A job for 28 grand. I requested for 30 grand, 30 grand, and it was given. And I have multiple experience, which I'm going to tell you later. But this is just one thing. You know why I was able to act? Because I believed I was what that. I believe that this, I am worth this. Why? I am worth this. Not because I worked hard alone. Of course, I worked hard physically, but I worked hard on my mind. I worked hard on myself. I saw myself as good as everyone else in that position. In fact, there was 300 there. I put my name 301. 301. I was not scared. I had confidence. I had belief. And then I prayed to God. Why? Because I know I've done the job. I've put in the work. That's what I say. Put in the work and pray. Put in the work and pray. Put in the work and pray. Oh my God, put in the work and pray. It goes hand in hand, hand in hand. Nothing, nothing is given in this world. Nothing is given. You take. And the way you take, you educate yourself. You sharpen yourself. You stay sharp, stay sharp, stay woke. So your future today can be predicted based on your past and your core. Most important thing, not just in your past, your current activity. Your past could be horrible. I mean, I tell you my story. I have such an amazing childhood, but I was poor. I came from poverty. Like, till I left my house at the age of, uh, as a teenager, we never had a TV in the house. I mean, I have to spy through the window to watch TV in other people's house. That's how crazy it was. I slept on the floor till I became a teenager. And even as a teenager, when I left the house, I had no bed. That's what I'm telling you. I slept on the mat continuously. But I said to myself, Bish, you got to do more. Why did I say that? Because I spent my time time on the tennis club, on the other side. So I wasn't part of the other side. I, I, I didn't belong there, but I was there. And you know why? That educated my mind. Not only did I see my environment, like, no, this is not my environment. I saw the other side and I said, I want to be like this other side. I like this side better. When I sat with the, uh, the kids um, from the rich family, they tell me how they had uh, the food they eat. Each has like two meat. I'm like, two meat in your food? I eat Every day without meat or fish or nothing. I mean, if you if you know, like we, my mom made my mom was such an amazing person. She made this food. Most of the time we haven't got um, um, money to 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 cook soup. She, uh, sorry, um, money to buy meat. She made uh, soup with this. Uh, there's a kind of a dry fish in Nigeria. It's uh, as dry as the it's as dry as um, anchovies. Anchovies. Did that small. It's dried up. It's thin rotten, but it gives us the food some protein. That's where we got our protein from. Because we couldn't afford to buy proper fish. Proper fish. And I said, no, no. 
I cannot become this. My mom, my parents did the best they could for me. But I knew inside of me there was something that saying, bitch, you got to do more. You got to step out. You got to stamp your flag right on that mountain and say, I am here. I am here. You cannot be teaming the rest of your life, hiding face to face, running face to face, complaining, moving from city to city, town to town, job to job, relationship to relationship, changing every other thing, and you refuse to change the one most important thing yourself. Why? Because you have no curiosity. You're not questioning anything. You're not questioning anything. You're not investigating anything. You're not researching anything. You're just absorbing everything. You've become a dumping ground of information and you do nothing with this information. You paid for your result. You paid for your result. Imagine so much information dumped into you. You just spew out. You cannot analyze it and pick out the finest of that information and sell it on. No. You have become a dumping ground. And that's why you are where you are. I was there. Even today, I'm not where I need to be, but I know I could help you just like where I'm helping myself because I've reached into myself and I know I could become better. And I'm working every single day to become the best I can. If I can reach you, I know I've worked, worked it right by living well in this world. I have worked it right by giving, by reaching you, by making you think, by making you start to think, I can become something. I can become something. I can make a change. I can influence someone. I can influence my generation. I can change. I can rock it. I can live it right. If I can do that for you today, brother, I will say, God, thank you. I've lived it right. I, in fact, not lived it. I've rocked, rocked it right. You cannot outgrow your environment, especially when you can't outgrow your mind. You have to change. You have to work on yourself. You have to work on yourself. There's something, there's something about um, animals. If you, if you listen to my talks, just again, please listen. I'm not a trained speaker. But the knowledge, I have the knowledge because this is my life. I go through this every day and I mingle with the best people in the world and I focus on growing by learning from the experience, by learning from the book and by applying this to myself. And that's why I could speak to you because I'm in the same field as you. And this is making a change in my life. I know it's going to make a great change in your life if you just take this step. And what's this step? Activity, activity, activity. There's something uh, called um, indeterminate growth. Indeterminate growth. So things grow indeterminate. They just keep growing till they die. And there's some species like that, mostly fish. You know, fish, the indeterminate grower. Unlike human, you grow up to maybe a certain feet, you know, physically, certain feet physically. And as a human, you die. Because human is a determinant grower. You could determine, you know, or if anyone who is above seven feet is like, you know, a freak or whatever, you know. It's not it's not normal. So human are determinant grower. But like some species of fishes, they're like indeterminant grower. So they keep growing until they die. And that is they grow physically. They get bigger and bigger and bigger until they die. More like human we are indeterminant, sorry, we are determinant growers physically. But you know what's not, what's not determinant grower in human? Our mind. Our mind is an indeterminant grower. Our mind keeps growing and growing and growing till we die. Our minds never stop growing until we place a limit on it, until we place a lead on it. That is when our mind stops growing. As a human, we make the choice. Do we want to be an indeterminant grower or a determinant grower? When, when you place a lead in your mind, you place a box around your mind. You tell yourself, I'm going to stop growing. And you stop growing. You stop growing. You don't grow because you've been placed in the box by yourself. 
It's like if you have caged animals, caged for so many years, when you set them free, some must return. They return to that spot. The mind has been caged for so long, they know no different. They know no different. Wild animals, some have been caged for years, they know no different. But if you capture just a wild animal, maybe it got injured, you treated it in a cage and you just open the cage slightly, it's running back into the wild because it's a wild animal. So today I want you to break away from that shackle around your mind, you've placed around your mind to become a determined grower. I want you to become an indeterminate grower, to grow at will, to grow like the mountain, to grow like the trees, to flow like the river. Place no limits around yourself. Grow until you can grow no more. Grow until you die. And if you think I'm lying, take an example of um, maybe your granddad who um, never traveled a lot. You know, maybe they consumed their news from the papers around them, the environment, and then ask them about maybe foreign policy, um, foreign cuisine, uh, something about different country they've never experienced. They don't know, regardless of how old they are. They don't have the answers. You don't get answers just by growing old. No. You get answers by activity, by investigating, by doing something. You don't get answers by growing old. Knowledge doesn't come with age. Neither does wisdom. You can only learn from your own experience and your grandparents will have just learned on their own experience. That's all they have, their own experience. It's just a strand. That's all they can look back on. That's all they have on file, their own experience. Of course, the knowledge about something that they were involved in through their own eye. They can only see the world through one single vision, their own eyes. They haven't read so much books and, and hear other people's story. Some of them don't have a clue who Frederick Douglass is. They don't know anything about Frederick Douglass. No. So you have to get rid of that chain shackled around your mind. You have to become an indeterminate grower. You have to grow until you die. You have to read until you die. You have to learn until you die. You have to rock this life once, but rock it well. Live it well. Enjoy it. This is nothing to do with wealth. This has things to do with living life to the fullest. Giving what you can with what you have. Impacting on someone else's life. I teach tennis in my spare time. I love tennis. I like if you know me, you know everything about me is about tennis. I talk tennis, tennis, tennis. In most of uh, my analogy, I use tennis because tennis is a great, great sport. Tennis is a great, great sport. And you look at the guys who rule tennis. The guys, you know, who are the, who are the top players in tennis, they put in so much work but then they're willing to grow. They have different coaches. Some have two coaches. Some have mind psychologists, whatever. They are willing to grow. They don't just go out there and hit balls and balls and balls. Take a difference of a kid who smashes the ball against the wall every single day. Yeah. Hit the tennis ball against the wall every single day for, for 24 hours. And a guy who prepares for Wimbledon and he started with around four or five different coaches learning from the world. Who do you think is going to go further in life? That's exactly that same analogy principle applied to your life. That same principle. Like when I say giving back, I teach tennis in my spare time on the weekend and I give a lot of free lessons to especially people I know cannot afford it. Why? Not because I think they're going to go pro. Tennis is very expensive. You don't just go pro. No. You can have all the talent in the world. If you haven't got the finance, you would not make it. I told you, you would not make it. 
someone has to be there willing to push you, willing to sponsor you, willing to, uh, you know, pour a sail in your wind or wind in your sail. How is it said? You know why I give free lessons to these kids, especially kids from less, um, less, how do you say, less, um, not less fortunate, well, you know, um, what's the word for it? Well, from, from low-income families, low-income families. While I give free tennis lessons to kids from low-income family, it's because I want them to bring them around the people who play tennis so they could not only just play tennis, so they could associate themselves with these people, these people of authority, and they can learn. They can see these people and they think, yeah, I want to be you. They could mingle with these, these um, rich kids. They could break out from the environment. They ask the kids, because the kids, the curious, they ask the kids, what are you doing for holiday? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going for skiing. I'm going for uh, to Orlando. I'm reading this book. I'm doing this in school. I'm going for this school trip. They could immerse themselves in that, and that could trigger a thinking for them saying, I want to do this. I want to do this. And they could question, why can't I do this? Why can't my parents afford to do this? And when they get to understand that this is the reason your parents is not able to do this, and they can say to themselves, I want this for myself, and I want this for my kids, and they could start making the change right there, and they will go back to action, action, action. They could start taking action. They could start taking responsibility for themselves, and I sit to them. I ask them questions. I make them ask the other kids questions. I push them, like, go, learn, because I think if you only knew why you're living in the project, you will start Make taking actions today. You start making a change today. You will see yourself more like Frederick Douglass saw himself in 1838. That I am what more. I am a human. I am a man. I'm just like you. You cannot cage me. You can cage my body, but you can cage my mind. I am free. I'm taking that train to Maryland and I'm breaking free. And from today, I'm going to teach people how to be like you. He learned from his master just by one learning, sitting next to Sophia, and she thought, him the alphabet and she become engrossed in it and said i'm going to teach myself not only am i going to teach myself i'm going to teach other people yeah not only am i going to be build um, a group i'm going to build a crowd i'm going to build an army i'm going to make sure people know people learn and that's what i'm trying to do with whatever resources i have i give i make sure people learn you know I don't have that much money to give, but I give my time. And I know my time is worth more than my money because what my money cannot buy, my time can buy. My time will give you the opportunity to be in a place you wouldn't have been otherwise, to see people you wouldn't have seen otherwise, to meet people you wouldn't have met otherwise. I remember growing up back in Nigeria when I um, invited to um, maybe an executive um, office I met from the uh, tennis club when he invited me into the office. Once I get to the office, regardless, I was a teenager. I was like 14, 15 years old. I was treated, I was welcomed with the question, Sir, after the, the first time I go there, I always dress nice. So they assume I'm the man's kid. If they, if they, uh, maybe the reception or the, the security guard I does not know the man's kid, they assume, Oh, well, he's dressed so nice. He must be from a rich family. And then they let me in. Yeah, because I dress nice, I dress clean. I invested my money, I went to um, the second hand uh, market, I bought good second hand clothes, I washed it, I cleaned it, I ironed it, I dressed nice. So whenever I step into the office, I, I always wore shorts and I carry tennis racket everywhere. I think up to the age of 16, 17, 18, I wore shorts every single day, rain or shine. I was dressed for tennis every single day. Even when I went to uh, Curtis in church, I dropped my racket bag and I was dressed in shorts. When I, I traveled to see my mom in the village, I was in shorts. When I went to embassy, I was in shorts. I always traveled everywhere in shorts, ready. I was ready. My body was ready. My mind was ready. So when I go to this executive's office, they let me in immediately. And when I, I get to reception, the stretches of people sitting. And when I say to the reception, I'm here to see Mr. So-and-so. And they call in. They're like, oh, is that Bishop? Come in, come in, my boy. That's when they realize I'm not actually this man's son. I'm not actually this man's son. I'm just dressed for the occasion. And they're like, oh, come in, come in, my son. I always, always 
I jump the queue. The way the executive treats me, on my way out of the office, I get treated with the same respect from the receptionist, the gate man, whoever, that the security guy, a sir. I get the sir treatment. Why? Because they can now see me through the eyes of the boss. This is a very important boy. He might be a little boy, but he is a very important boy. Don't mess with him. You can get sacked. You can get sacked, I tell you. You would get sacked every time. And this applies to even military people. I walk into the military barracks. I am greeted with sir as a teenager. And if you don't know, ask any Nigerians about military people. They take advantage of you. They smack you. They beat you. They, they drape you. They do everything to you because they take advantage of their power. But these same military people, they acknowledge me with sir because they see me through the eyes of the boss. Of their, of their masters, of their commanders. Because that's the people I roll with. <laughs> I roll. I mean, man's been rolling for ages, bruv. Man's been rolling for ages. That's the people I roll with. The bosses. I mean, I started being an entrepreneur like a long time ago. I bought things. I sold things. I bought an old clothes. I washed the iron. It smelled as nice. I put some perfume in it. I sold it. It's new. I bought shoes. I bought racket. I bought things. Grip. I sold everything. I traveled everywhere with my bag. Those days, I was so young to open an account. I was I was less than 18 years old. I wasn't allowed to open a bank account. But I had everywhere I go and when there were money. I mean, I had to give my money to my older brother to keep for me because... Yeah, I used to use this bank account. That's how I'm telling you how early I started. How early I started. And if you read my story before, I started taking care of myself from the age, from primary four. Primary four. I started buying myself things, paying my school fees. Primary four. And now I look at myself and say, bitch, why are you stopping? Why? You got to get back to that mentality. You got to go back home. You got to give. You got to wake up. You got to see what made you you. Don't sleep. Don't slump. Don't become gullible. Wake up. Wake up. I'm trying to share this with you because every day this is me just exploding to come out and thinking how many people are there like me giving up. That's why I share this with you. The sad treatment. I get the sad treatment as a teenager. In every office I go, in every boss I go to see, come in my boy, that's it. Come in my boy. I get this. so many people standing there trying to see the boss. You know Why? You know why I always jump that queue? I have something to give. I have a skill. I have some kind of something to give. Yeah, I always approach them with something to give. They, they always benefit from me being around. So they, these other people, they, they're asking for something. Why I'm there giving something. That's the difference between you and the other person. He's there giving service and you there begging for a job. That is it. Look at yourself. You go around begging for jobs. You go around begging for jobs because you don't know what you want. And I was there giving. And that's why people make more 10 times your salary, 10 times your salary, because they're there giving service. They are there giving service. And why you are there begging for a job. And so every office I go, that I come in my boy, jump the queue, get treated nice, call the uh, receptionist or get him a drink. I get his sad treatment. Bishop, what can I offer you? That's what I get. Bishop, have a seat. What can I offer you in my office today? Oh, it's glad to see you finally visit me today. I've been waiting for you. Because oh, I went there to offer my service. I have something to give. I am passing something on for something else. Not like these guys who's come for a job or to see favors. They're waiting in line, trying to catch the eye of reception of the boss. They've come to beg. Have you been going around begging your whole life? Take a seat and look at yourself and say, have I been going around begging the whole of my life? Don't get me wrong. Some people get rich begging. They become professional beggars. Some people do. But how many of you can invest your time becoming a beggar? There can be only some few professionals who top the league in anything. That position has been taken by some people. You better invest yourself in something else. Have you been going around begging and begging and begging for the rest of your life? And how much more can you go on begging for? You have to stop, take a break. And now think, how can I start 
selling? How can I start giving services? How can I start selling myself? How can I become attractive? Success attracts success. That's what they say. No rich person wants a son or daughter to marry the poor and suffer. No, success attracts success. And that's why I give this kid opportunity in tennis to be around success so they can somehow know what success is and compare that to the environment and they want to be attracted to success. I give not because I have, I give because I believe by giving I can make someone better. By someone, just the same way someone gave me the opportunity to step into a tennis club and that changed my mindset. And I believe once, since I'm doing this for these kids, that's going to change the mindset. They're going to want more. Some are going to drop off. Like when I remember when I joined the tennis club, there were 50 of us, no, there were 15 of us. And maybe 12 dropped off and three of us were left. A lot of people are going to start the race, but very few are going to finish. Do you want to be a starter or finisher? My mom always says to me, when you start, you must finish. When you start, you must finish. So when I start something, I always stick my life. I stick my life to that. I'm going to finish this. Are you a starter or a finisher? Do you just start things and let it go by the way? Or do you focus and finish it? So you have to say to yourself from today, from today, I will always finish. I will always commit myself. I will always sell myself. I will stop begging. And you know what I'm begging? Because I have nothing to sell. Now I will start selling. And how do you start? I have to learn. You cannot give what you don't have. You cannot give what you don't have. So my brothers and my sisters, I'm going to leave you with this today. It's Sunday. I just done my morning prayer mass. Find yourself. Question yourself. Investigate. Outgrow your environment. Outgrow your environment. Be a wild animal. Be an indeterminate grower. Rock this life. If you're going to live it once, live it well. If you're going to live it once, live it well. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for listening. Let's start today and work on activities. And I promise you tomorrow will be favorable to us. Thank you.